Hello, everybody. Welcome into Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jeremy Lapidus. Today is Wednesday, October 30th. I hope everybody is having a wonderful day so far. Today, we have a big day big show. So much news coming out of the NFL in the last 24 hours, including, but not limited to, Anthony Richardson getting benched. The just second year quarterback already had his leash pulled by the Colts. Trades from the Jaguars to the Vikings, the Panthers to the Ravens, and more. Of course, our NFL rookie report that we do every Wednesday, and our second NBA power rankings of the the season. World Series also going on. So much to talk about, but before we get into any of that, remember, if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Or, if you are on YouTube, you can use that Super Chat feature. If you use either of those two things, you can you can have your message pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you do have a burning question about sports, anything at all that you would like to ask, go ahead and throw that in the comments. Throw it in the chat. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate everybody so much for sticking around, talking some sports with me here on a beautiful Wednesday, October 30th. But like I was saying, we are going to start off our show with, as the title says, Anthony Richardson, officially benched by the Indianapolis Colts. This move caught me, and I know a lot of other NFL fans by surprise. Anthony Anthony Richardson, since he entered the league, since his draft process began, has been a very polarizing figure when it comes to NFL quarterbacking. He's a guy that started just 13 games at Florida. He's a guy who had very obvious issues when he was at Florida, whether it be his accuracy, especially that being the biggest one. But he also had some of the most insane physical tools we have ever seen a quarterback have ever. And he shows both of those sides every single time he's on the football field, right? You see him make maybe the greatest throw you've ever seen in your entire life, and then the next throw, he can't hit a two-yard check down. There's lots of ups and downs, and this week, more than maybe any other week, we have seen it really be a glaring, glaring issue for the Colts. In the first half of that game, Anthony Richardson goes 2 for 15. With 81 yards, one of those two completions being an absolute bomb, 69-yard completion, right? A big, big play guy. That's what he is. He can have 12 completions, go for 244 yards. That's just the kind of player he is. He also had a very bad week optically and on the football field. Not just did his team lose after he missed a couple of passes, not all his fault. There were three touchdowns he threw that were dropped by his receivers. So it's not all on him. But when we talk about this game, the big thing that everyone is talking about, of course, is the moment where Anthony Richardson tapped out. Anthony Richardson taps out after really just an incredible no no gain of a play. He gets caught in the backfield by the Houston Texans defensive line, shakes off a defensive tackle, is able to get to the to the line of scrimmage, maybe even pick up a yard. He is then gassed. And that's not something that we see happen in the NFL with quarterbacks really ever. You understand with the way that he plays, maybe he is, but what was undeniably unacceptable for him to do there was for him to then tap out of the game. Now, what compounds this issue, and I think the reason that obviously this was made, is the fact that they have Joe Flacco on the bench. And Joe Flacco, winner of the Comeback Player of the Year award last year, currently undefeated starter in the NFL this year after going 2-0 and with, uh, excuse me, not undefeated, lost to the Jaguars, but looked really good as the starter for the Colts. Just in his two starts when he was spelling Anthony Richardson when he went down with injury earlier this season. No one and no one no one with a brain, no one with eyes that has been watching football is going to sit here and tell you that Joe Flacco doesn't give the Colts a better option, a better ability to win 
now. What this does throw into question, though, and the reason that I still struggle to figure out if this was a good move or not, is when it comes to the future of this franchise. Because this is a franchise that has been mired in mediocrity, stuck in that, oh, we're almost going to make the playoffs range, ever since Andrew Luck retired. They have gone from veteran quarterback to veteran quarterback to veteran quarterback to promising rookie to veteran quarterback to veteran quarterback. They have had this insane QB cycle since Andrew Luck retired, and this isn't helping it. This is a team that is caught in the same cycle. They desperately want to go back to their winning ways when they had a Peyton Manning. They don't have a Peyton Manning, though. They don't have an Andrew Luck. This is not something that you can just rush. And that was the idea behind getting Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson, famously a project quarterback. Anthony Richardson, a quarterback that I still have a long leash on because I still think he has all of the ability to be a great starter in the NFL. Now, that's my bias here. That's me pushing my agenda. But the Colts seem to have lost that. Anthony Richardson has only played 10 games in the NFL. Only played 10 games. And they're already ready to pull the string on him. That is way too quick of a leash for a guy that, again, I will remind you, was a known project quarterback coming out of Florida. This was a guy that was not going to be a snap your finger, get him in the lineup, and you fix your franchise. This is a guy that had all the tools to do it, but you had to develop him. And in my opinion, the best way to develop a guy like that, we saw it in Buffalo with Josh Allen. You look at their two stats side by side, they're very similar over their first couple of games, right? Through the first 10-ish games for both of them, they both had about a 50% completion percentage. And that's the big thing that's being harped on by Colts fans, by the league, by everyone saying, hey, he has a really bad completion percentage, the worst in almost 20 years. You're right. He's throwing and only completing about 50% of his balls. No one is going to argue with you there. It's just the numbers. It's just the facts. But he needs time. He needs reps. He is not going to get better accuracy-wise by sitting behind Joe Flacco. And that's the issue. That is the biggest issue here. There are things you can learn from sitting behind a quarterback. You can learn how to read a defense. You can learn how to be a competent professional. But when your biggest issue is is accuracy and consistency when throwing the ball, the only way to get better is to actually do it. You're not going to get more consistent by not throwing the ball. This is a Colts season that, in my opinion, should have been solely devoted to getting Anthony Richardson ready. And if it wasn't ready this season, oh well, load up next season. That's when you can make your do-or-die decision. This season should have been let Anthony Richardson be that crazy Anthony Richardson, see what he can do on a football field. That leash was pulled way too quick, and if the coaches, if Shane Steichen, after just two seasons now, is scared for his job, the Colts organization is doing something wrong. Complete, being completely honest with you, he almost took a Gardner Minshew-led team, a Gardner Minshew-led Colts team, to the playoffs last year. They were arguably one play away from making the playoffs last year, and now if he really thinks he's that close, if that's the reason why he's why they're going to why they're going to fire him, that is not a very well-run organization. That is an organization who has their finger hovering over the panic button. This move makes no sense to me. I have no idea why now. This is a season that yes, Joe Flacco gives them a better chance to win right now. But the Colts brass should have come in with the mentality that, hey, this season is the Anthony Richardson season. We're either going to go 17-0 and and Anthony Richardson is going to win the MVP, or we're going to draft in the top 10, top 15. This is still a solid team. They need to be okay with that. Anthony Richardson is not going to get better from the bench, and it doesn't sound like this is a long-term decision. I hate this move by the Colts. It makes no sense to me. I absolutely despise it. But let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. What do you think the Colts should have done? 
Would you have kept the leash going for Anthony Richardson? Let me know in the comments. We're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we turn our attention still in football, but we turn our attention to the trades. The trade deadline just about a week away at this point. We had another massive wide receiver move. A tackle was traded. Not something you see every day. We'll talk about that and more coming up next here on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. 